Right guys, the second video on the road to 2500, playing a 761, Henry Mary Magdalene 55. It's probably not his real name. Uh, I don't think his last name's 55. But uh, you never know. <coughs> Stands to uh, gain 73 rating points if I win this game. My K score is so low, that's why that is. Yeah, I don't really know this opening, but you see here just uh, some basic principles. They're not following these players, I mean, they're blundering pieces, but also. Moving this knight twice is not the one. You've already got the knight developed here. To move it again, just to attack a pawn when the I mean, obviously when the pawn's defended, it's not a good idea. But this move is is a really unprincipled move here. Knight to a4. You need to get your other piece developed. You've got your bishop on the back here, queen, the rook. You could just castle there. He's doing the same thing over here. I can just develop here. I think he wants to play queen f3, but that's easily blocked. He's threatening checkmate that for a second. And you have to calculate when your opponent makes these uh, checkmate threats, you have to calculate if you block it, for example, with the knight, you have to calculate if they can kick the knight, which I did here. I knew he could play g4 and I knew I could take it, so. Um. I think I'll just take the central pawn. Well, and now I will take this pawn as well. I'm taking this pawn with tempo. You see, I'm attacking the h2 square there. The rook and the bishop gang up. It's so quite an easy decision for me to make there. I will develop my queen here. Queen f6. If he plays rook h2 here, pinning my bishop, uh, and sack it, I can play uh, rook h4, attacking the queen. The queen moves, and I can play queen f6, which defends. Uh, Yeah, it's dominant. I think I'll bring my bishop back here. My bishop was precarious on h2. Right now, I'm going to play a move. This might seem a bit unprincipled, but king e7. But the point is, I'm so ahead in development here. His bishop and rook on out. His king is so weak that it, it you know, it's all a question of um, okay, just wandering pieces now. It's all a question of uh, relativeness. All oh, right, I just uh, blundered the piece there. Um, uh, but I have actually got knight e three here. His king was so weak he didn't have time to take my rook there. So rook h two check. And then queen g6 is knight. Yeah, so king e7, I like that move. He plays here to, you know, he takes my rook, but his king is so weak here. Knight d3. And he's basically forced to take knight, uh, rook h2 check. Forces the king onto the back rank, and then queen g6 is mate. Alright, next game.
So I pretty much always play the Sicilian, which is c5 after e4. Uh, with white, I play c4. And against d4, for my opponent, I play knight f6. Against c4, I also play knight f6. My pawn on h6 there. I understand that. I can play maybe knight a4 and a5 next move, attacking the c4, uh, c4 pawn and the b3 square, which is a 4. First, I'll take knight. So I'm just trying to get some pieces to good squares here. I don't mind this trade. Um, play my bishop to um, my bishop to attacking this pawn. I'll take the pawn. Generally speaking, I don't like to make these trades uh, when the, the pieces are facing each other. I like to just maintain the tension. Maintain the tension means just not taking and not moving away. If my opponent takes my queen now, then I get my rook to the d-file. And if he takes my rook again, I can keep my rook on the d-file. Now I have to move away. His rook was attacking my queen. Now. And this bishop back move is quite solid. It stops the rooks from getting to the 7th rank. Neither rook can come to the 7th rank now. Which is, uh, if you read my system, uh, is it my system by um, whoever it was, uh, Latvian grandmaster, I forgot his name. Then um, he talks about getting rooks to the seventh rank, and it's a uh, really nice square to get them to. Squares to get them to. No, I will shut out my bishop. Although he could have played bishop uh, g4 there, I just realised. Um, he still can't get either of his rooks to the back rank here. Now his bishop shut out. Now I get my bishop to this nice diagonal. Outside of my own pawn structure and attacking that. F2 form. Uh, I'll just form it back to here or here. My rooks are nicely placed here. They're not on the on my second rank because 
there it needs to be my bishop. Surprised it's taking away. I was hoping he'd pay f3 there, because now when I push, these pawns trap in his own bishop. If I'd have played e3 myself, he would have. Um, Just kick out the rook here. I don't mind the game at all. Got an Argentine cover in the front door. That was quite well played by that 731. He only blundered pieces when he got to time trouble, which is understandable. He played very well in the opening. I'm sure he was winning here in the opening. I wasn't sure what to do. My knight was in trouble here. I wanted to play uh, knight a4, but then he would get tempo with rook c, uh, c1. And then I have to move my queen back to the air, and then my knight's trapped on the edge of the board here. So I traded. I didn't want to take with the bishop. If I take with the bishop, of course he can take this pawn, but he can also play uh, f4 with tempo. And a uh, uh, big attack's coming here. So I took with the pawn. Ooh. Anyway, it's not allowed me to go back to the original. Anymore. Queen comes back. Oh, I have to take this pawn here, it's too strong. And then bishop c6, I get a nice bishop. He just forgets his pawns attacked here. Now his rooks attacked my queen, got to take back. I put my bishop back to c6, that was a nice move, so neither of his rooks can get to the seventh rank here, which is important. And now as his rooks can't get to the seventh rank, I can be a bit more uh you know less strict with moving my pawns in front of my king. Because he, he doesn't really have a way of attacking the seventh rank here. My seventh rank is weak here, but he can't get to it. My rook on this on the third rank here stops his rook from penetrating. Cut off his bishop. Get my other rook to support the pawn. I get my bishop to a nice square here. Because he moved his rook away. And here there's basically just a waiting move. I think it's slight improvement of my king. Very slight, but there wasn't much else to do. And then after he played f3, I push e3. Kick his rook out here. I don't want his rooks coming into my position. He has to move his rook back now. Or he could have already traded, which we did. And then he, he blundered in time trouble. Alright, last game for this video coming up. Play C4 as I usually do. Playing against Black. From Russia. See, they keep going, they want to go to these instant threats, these beginner players. I'm not sure it's a good idea. It's better just to develop your pieces, get into better squares because these these immediate checkmate threats can be defended with developing moves by yourself. 
So you end up with a, a positional advantage. Um, I think I will break through here. I want to open up my bishop here. my queen off the back rank here so I can get my rooks into play. Alright, he's just gone to the piece there. Unfortunately now I have uh, huge control over the d5 square, so I can ensconce a piece on that square now. The d5 square is a nice square now for my pieces. Hard for him to attack. Alright, cheers guys, three more games for you, I'm now at 895, only 1600 points away from my goal. Anyway, cheers, see ya.